Hey guys, welcome back to my channel on comic penciling. Um, this is part two to the last video on rendering. Um, and in that video I went through more of the uh, spotting out your blacks. And I did that on a background of another page. Uh, it was page one actually, and I'm on page three. But I kind of set it up the same way to kind of have some sort of consistency. Last time I did the background of it. And so I did the background here and I did some of the background characters. I even did Green Lantern because I wanted to just jump right in on the other half of rendering, which is the cross hatching and, and um, you know, more of the softening of edges and, and small details. Um, so I'm going to do the whole second half of this page. Uh, and I am actually apologize because this first um, take I did was with this weird uh, a vertical orientation of the camera and that I'll fix in, in another minute or so uh, I realized that I was in the wrong orientation anyway uh, I'm gonna do the second half of this page there's like more background people uh, aliens to the right uh, a lot of background elements and then this alien running in the foreground um, that I have to render with this uh, I'm doing this whole page with the um, the sun in the background so everything is going to be kind of shadowed out um, you can see it's kind of backlit so with that in mind I gotta keep the lighting consistent and always imagine your one light source um, and <clears throat> so I'm about to begin but I, before I want to let you know I use what I'm using I use um, a Stedler, uh two millimeter lead holder with 2H lead and you know as long as you keep it sharp it's a good tool um, I think I'm using Strathmore 300 or 400 I forget what they use on these comic uh, boards but they're pretty good quality uh, paper so I'm, I like uh, these materials but I'm about to start on this motorcycle and again I have to start out with doing the um, the blacks I have to spot out my blacks and then I know the bulk of it and I can kind of feel out you know the the shape the form so each part of this motorcycle that I'm working on is a um, and there's the camera fixing but uh, each part of this motorcycle is kind of curved and so the lights gonna hit a little differently um, and I'll have to throw in some cross hatching to kind of give it that curve um, but I kind of want it to put in the background, so I'm going to fill this in a lot with black. I want the blast from Green Lantern to kind of stand out more than anything. So that's what I'm going for. And I'm adding a few details as I go, you know, just having fun with it. Um, I have this other uh, personal project I was doing on like the space uh, racing kind of comic. You can go to my website. Uh, Joe Catapano art um, dot com and you can see like I did a couple sample pages of that comic and it's really just about this like s glorious space race with these guys riding these weird sci-fi motorcycles so I kind of got used to drawing motorcycles and using kind of my experience of all the tests I did for that here and I kind of remember what worked and what didn't work um, and I think most of what I did here is effective um, again I'm trying to keep it not prominent for the page so uh, here I go putting in cross hatching and pretty much taking the base of it and dragging um, from thick to thin towards the light source and um, the longer the the stroke you make the more it's gonna feel curved and the shorter you make that stroke more it's going to seem like a bevel and almost like a straight edge so that's pretty much the technique um, that I use pretty much throughout this whole thing and and there's not you know there's some variations where I do it a different way where I go parallel um, with the surface I think um, also I want to point out this little problem I had here I like the shadow. I want this like bungee cord that's strapped down to be just kind of resting at, at one point on that pipe I'm making and uh, the shadow wasn't working so I think I still mess with it a little bit but um, 
yeah, I had to fix that as I went. Realized that was wrong. Um, but either way, I, I do a couple other rendering techniques, and it's essentially um, either going toward the light source or parallel or perpendicular to the light source and kind of gradating out from thick to thin. And you'll see me do it a couple places, and I'll point it out. And so uh, you can see, if I, I think I sharpened up a couple times already, and um, you know it's really important, keeps everything uh, really crisp. So as I'm just doing these aliens, which are pretty standard, I'm just lighting it from pretty much left to right. You know they're sideways, so they're, you're gonna get to see a little bit more of them. Um, but as I do that, you know I'm. Just want to talk about kind of what I've been doing lately. I uh, have uh, been recently let go of my job uh, that I had here in Florida uh, at, a, at a startup game studio, and I, since I was let go, <clears throat> I have a lot of extra time to well, one, you know, looking around for jobs, learning new techniques, uh, working on these new samples, um, and starting these videos. First of all. Um, but I've also been getting into some t-shirts, uh, some designs there, uh, and just kind of all around, uh, different endeavors that since without the job, I have a lot of time. Anyway, we're, uh, working on Green Lantern right now and I'm doing that same technique. And the only thing different here is sometimes I'll put wherever, uh, the line is curving across the muscle of the forearm, say. Sometimes I put another mark on the other end of it to kind of give it, um, you know, these muscles are kind of like long football kite type of shapes. So you putting another line sometimes gives it a tubular cylindrical uh, form. So it's good for that. So that's the only difference here, but same thing. I, I put a thick to thin line going toward the light source, uh, sometimes wrapping uh, around the muscle a little bit more just to kind of give it the shape depending on the perspective um, but I think you know the main masses of the shadows I put in already is kind of what brought this to life and and the little bit of rendering just gives it the polish kind of makes it feel good and uh, that's essentially what I do uh, for everything and you know, just gives it a little bit more believability. And, you know, in the comic world, you gotta knock out these pages pretty quick. Um, I'm spending a whole lot of time on these. I mean, it's sped up like very, very quickly. Um, but uh, I've been spending a lot of time on these samples. And, uh, but normally you wouldn't really have this kind of time. You gotta kind of put out almost a page a day, just about at least. And uh, so any kind of techniques that, um, any technique that's gonna serve the story, one, or um, make it look believable or realistic or um, mainly you just need to resemble what object you're trying to draw so any kind of cheap technique if it works it works and that's kind of the, the rule here um, that's why a lot of these quick blacks are the way to go because it's a uh, the way to uh, do it quickly, and the quicker you do it, the better. Um, as long as it looks good, you don't want to sacrifice quality. But yeah, don't want to go into any unnecessary, um, you know, rendering. So I'm just doing these boxes, these crates to the left, trying to this giant shipping container to the left. I kind of was shadowing out most of it. Um, so it was fun to just kind of visualize where those blacks would be. You know the shadows would fall. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do, just to, like lay out objects, you know, in my room or my house somewhere, and just put a light on it and see how the, the shadow, the cast shadows lie. Cast shadows are like, I'm, like addicted to cast shadows, so I do that a lot <clears throat> in my spare time. Um, so I'm working on the alien in the foreground here, and it's essentially the same thing. He's got a giant bulbous head. So it's gonna be act like mostly a sphere with weird raisin wrinkles, you know. Uh, using a lot of insect reference for this, some macro photography, because um, 
man, you got to go look at those photos if you've never seen some macro photography. It's just like really high res photography of um, super small stuff. So I am I use like a crazy macro lens, and I'm looking at this reference of like weird wasps and and bugs and beetles, and you know I'm just trying to do a little bit of mix of of something humanoid, obviously. And, I wanted something that could you could see expression. I don't want to go. I wanted to have a mouth. I wanted to have a nose. Um, wanted to seem alien, but at the same time, I wanted to be kind of human. I could have went way out there. I mean, Screen Lantern. I could have gone insanely, uh, you know, creative about it. But I don't want him to be like chasing like a squid thing that can fly, or you know, for this I wanted just to be, you know, a humanoid kind of alien, and something that can ride a motorcycle so that was my goal here um, I stopped here at page three I finished this page yesterday and I um, I could continue it I might continue it who knows um, I'm really in love with doing like motorcycle chases and races and so I kind of came um, this whole idea came from like a sci-fi um, race kind of thing but with green lantern so i'm just trying to mix mix some genres there so this guy's running away he's gonna hop onto a, a bike of zone and go on this like highway that i've been showing throughout the whole few pages and when he drives away i'm gonna have uh, lantern make this cool bike of zone with like super thrusters and it's just gonna look nuts he's gonna make this uh crazy construct and uh, we'll have like a crazy race and and it'll be like a chase scene. It'll be really cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to go that far with it. I want to see if this sa these samples are worth it. Um, I'm going to look at them again. But for now, I've got some other things going on. I'm getting into some storyboarding. Um, that outlet's always been super interesting. And I think it's important that you go, um, you know where you want to go with your career. I mean, even if you don't. Um, you should do it anyway, but you should always kind of branch out a little bit and see where your, um, you know, where your creativity is stemming from. You know, you don't really know. I've I've only done a little bit of storyboarding before. And I'm pretty sure I wasn't doing it right. So I'm going to take some courses, some cool stuff on Gumroad. There's some cool stuff uh, elsewhere, and some big names that I want to try to do uh, and get into some storyboarding because it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun, a lot of gesture, you know, and and that's going to help out my characters probably in comics as well. Um, probably my shots. I'm going to visualize things more because it's almost animation. It's, it's like it's like you're making your hand drawing animatics pretty much um, if you're doing it uh, a certain way. Because I think t TV in the television industry for storyboarding they only they, they fake the camera movement and kind of like they draw if they're doing like a zoom in shot they'll draw the whole frame and then when they zoom in, they'll just draw lines on the edges of the frame and draw lines in, uh, showing that it'll zoom in. Whereas in feature film, apparently they also um, they do it a little different, where they actually draw the camera moving, the character moving, and everything is kind of um, animated almost. Um, so I think I'm going to do it that way. I think they'll help me um, understand, uh, you know, form better and just movement. You know, trying to become more natural, help out the figure drawing, help out, help out everything. So, and on top of that, it's it's a good avenue for um, any artist. So, working on this alien for several minutes here. I think it was probably about an hour. Or so I spent on this on this alien. He's blacked out a lot because he's really facing exact the yeah, exact opposite way as the sun so a lot of it's blacked out but it's definitely fun um, a lot of times you'll see me outline something before I put in the blacks and, and that's because uh, in comics you kind of, you're given the opportunity to um, normally you might not see you know, a rim light on everything, but if you outline things like the thing on the chest, it's gonna show 
more of what um, it's gonna like define the form better some, in some cases um, but in comics it's really cool to show that so a lot of times I'll give it an outline even though if there's not a necessarily a rim light there I'll do it anyway to show a little more detail and give you give the viewer um, just a better shot of understanding what I'm drawing you know otherwise you black out everything something's gonna get lost so you'll see me do the outlines quite a bit and um, I don't know if you've seen me I think when I was doing the boxes I uh, the, the crates to the left when I was doing those I laid down a piece of paper uh, because there's so much lead on this paper right now it's backlit so there's so much black on the page normally I might just put X's where I want um, the ink to go to be full black you know that's a technique just to put down an X and then the anchor knows where to black out um, you know different objects but since I'm doing samples for penciling and I think it's just a lazy route to not put in the the blacks um, and I don't want to appear lazy so what I'm doing here is probably working on a hand which I'm not showing you it's a bummer that I'm not a super cameraman and don't realize what I'm doing but maybe eventually I'll figure this all out uh, but yeah I'm sure I'm working on this guy holding the briefcase that he's running away with uh, we don't even know what's in it I didn't show I wanted that to be a mystery in the story I'm sure it's just like a bomb or money or something either way uh, doing the fist here just trying to keep to the same lighting um, and I'm probably gonna throw in some rendering marks here soon cross hatching and they're all mostly gonna go to the light source um, and you know I think it's effective for the most part and a lot of this I, I pull from a lot of different artists I mean you gotta you know look all around for different methods different techniques and I think this technique um, it's a, it, there's a few different things you know I, I follow several artists but I think David Finch talked about a lot of this um, I know I talked to him about or talk to you about using his method for backgrounds but you know his his rendering I think he overs renders a little bit I think to me in my opinion but I still use his techniques because it's it's effective and he um, has awesome super detailed you know uh, artwork and I kind of want to resemble that in some form or fashion you know not all the way but the, the grit he gets from the way he does these lines um, is what I'm going for so I like what happens there. I could do more with with this, but I like to try to keep it simple too. Uh, I think, like I said, I think he over renders a little bit, um, but it's it's his route. You know, everybody's got their own taste. So, but with that, what I want to do is is a little less rendered. So here I'm doing something slightly different. I put lines all the way through that little pocket of flesh there, and you know I, I may black it out later on because it's somewhat working, but. Um, sometimes I put lines all the way through to just every line you put down means that there's it's gonna appear like there's more shadow there so um, you want the lines spaced out well and, and polished but even if you scribble in lines if you have a scribbly technique it's still gonna be effective somewhat because your eyes gonna see it as shadow um, so for the most part everything's working working out well and yeah um, nearing finished on this video I work on it for several more hours after I end this video but um, I had to clear up a lot of the shapes in the background and add in a lot more detail on the ground and everything else and mix in you know all the elements kind of make it all cohesive so I'm about to cut to um, my finished page and you can check it out I'll scroll through it um, you can see some of the other techniques I've through in there like speed lines are in there and you'll see me on the pipes to the right I do a parallel kind of gradient around the pipes to give it that effect um, and that's a good technique for that kind of shape uh, but this is the end on rendering I'll be doing a lot more videos coming up soon uh, but it's been awesome thanks for coming back and watching uh, check out my other videos check out my website and uh, thanks